Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here like always. In today's video, we're finally going over automatic water system that I installed here for the birds. Now I know what you're thinking. It's been a while. Why haven't you done this video a little bit quicker? Well, one of the things that I wanted to do when I set up this automatic water system was that I wanted to gain some experience from it first. I wanted to make sure that it was the right fit for my birds prior to doing a video about it. There were a lot of trials and errors that I did along the way, and I learned a lot from this. So that gave me time to kind of learn these small little things to share with you guys so that when you install your system, you don't have to go through any of these headaches. Now it's been probably about, I wanna say give or take a month, maybe closer to the two month mark that I've had this complete system installed. All of the birds are set up already drinking from this automatic water system, and it has been great so far. Now, for those of you that may be interested in finding out where to buy this, I'm not gonna give promotions to any specific website. All you have to know is that this system is the Edstrom Veriflow valve system. I'm gonna go ahead and put the name right up here on this corner. Just Google it, look it up. There are plenty of companies out there that are selling this system. Try to find out in your area which one is the cheapest or which one is supplying this or where you can order it online from and then go from there. But as long as you get the Edstrom system, it's gonna be the same exact one that I have back here. Now, here are a couple of the things that you are gonna need in order to set up this system. The system comes with a variety of things. One of the things that you're gonna have to buy is the hose. This hose all depends how long or how many feet you're gonna need for my aviary or for this bird room back here. I think I ended up using around 600 feet of hose to get to every single one of these cages. Like I mentioned in the past, there are 200 cages here. Other than the hose, you're gonna go ahead and need the tees. Um, these tees are what is gonna connect that whole entire system. This is how you're gonna do those lines that you see these vertical lines uh, going up and down. And then you got your horizontal lines going from the front to the back. And I, I did two systems. You have to try to figure out with your cage setup, which way is gonna be better. Let's take a look at how it is that I set up these lines that you see here for the water system. I divide my bird room into three sections. We have the left wall, we have the center, and then we have the far right wall. And what I ended up doing was for the left wall and for the right wall, I did the main line up top, which is horizontal, and then vertical lines that go down in between the cages. And the reason why I did this was because I wanted to be able to pull out each individual cage if I needed to. So let's say cage number 24 right here. Let's say that this pair gets sick for X reason. What I have to do is now I have to pull this cage out and disinfect that cage and clean it properly before putting it back in. If the lines were not vertically like this and they would loop on top of every single one of these cages in an S pattern, what would end up happening is that same as up there, how I have it zip tied to the roof, it would have to be zip tied to the top cage. And then it would make it impossible for me to move this one. And then when we run the line for this side, it would have to be zip tied here and it would make it impossible for you to pull these cages out. So that is the reason why the right side has vertical lines and why the left side has vertical lines because I want to be able to pull these cages out in case I have to clean them. Now the center is a completely different story. These cages are stacked one on top of the other. So since these cages are stacked, it doesn't matter. I can loop the lines in an S pattern, go all the way to the end, go down, and then keep coming across. And as you can see, they loop, they get zip tied to the cage, and then from the top, it comes in. Now, when we talk about which way is gonna be the best way to set up your system, like I said, you have to do a diagram and you have to try to figure out what's gonna be better for you. I decided to start at the end. This is where I started the line. So with my hose, I knew that this is where I wanted to end. And what I did was that I grabbed it and I started all the way at the bottom. Now you may be wondering, why is it that with these vertical ones, why do you have a bottom line? And the reason is because even though they're vertical, you can't just end it right here and cut it off because you have to be able to drain these lines. So they have to connect to a final one all the way at the bottom so that all these vertical lines are able to drain into this one, come all the way to the end, you have your little valve right here or your cutoff, and you're able to every once in a while completely drain the entire system to clean out anything that may be in it. 
So this is where it ends. I knew that this was gonna be the end, so I started to run my line through here, and I started here. We went all the way to the end on this side. As you can see, we just loop it straight up, get to the roof, and we start going this way. Once we get to the end over here, we went to the side, we did a T, and that's what came in to feed these center cages right here. And then from there, it keeps going all the way this way, and we keep going all the way to the end. So through the top, and once we get to this side right here, it goes outside into the pressure reducer. Now, when you do this loop, you also have to put a T for the first vertical line that comes down, and then that one goes all the way through to the end, where it has another drain and it ties every single one of these vertical lines ties down into this bottom one. And then we're able to drain the system through there as well. So if you decide to go vertical up and down, you need to have a bottom line, which is gonna be your drain for all of the lines. That way you're able to every once in a while drain the system. When you do the S motion, like the one that you see up here, this one just kind of goes all the way to the end. It curves down comes this way, curves back down again, goes that way and like that till you continue. Once it gets all the way to the end, it comes out here. And then we have another drain system right here. So keep that in mind, anytime that you put any of these valves, you do need to end with a drain. That way you're able to clear your system out every once in a while, whether you go vertical or whether you go horizontal. The valves are another thing that you're gonna need obviously, and these are the valves themselves. Um, I'll go ahead and show you up here. There's going to be a little picture of the type of valve that this is. This is going to be the smaller one. There are different types of very flow valve. And these are the ones that are good for the smaller birds, like the finches. These are the ones that I grabbed. Then also you're going to have the clips. This is what's going to hold that valve onto your cage. And when you put it all together, it kind of looks like this. You got your valve and it goes inside of that clip and then it clips onto the cage and right behind it is where your hose goes. So that is pretty much it as far as the system or the simple setup of that system. Besides that, you're going to have to try to figure out how you're going to go about connecting this system to your water. Are you going to do it with a container? If you're going to go with a gravity fed container, then you have to grab or you have to buy a five gallon bucket or something that's bigger than a five gallon bucket. And you need to set it up higher than your aviary so that that water can be gravity fed into the cages. And if you decide to go this route, you're going to need a couple more things. For example, you're going to need for that container a plunger. And what this plunger is going to do is that you're able or it allows you to connect your hose to the plunger and it goes inside of your container. And it almost works just like the plunger from your toilet. Once the water level reaches a certain point, the plunger goes up, boop, and it stops the water flow from coming in. Once the water in that container starts to go down because the birds are drinking, it goes down and then it activates the water being fed in there again. That way you don't have to continuously worry about adding water to your container every so often. So that is a great thing to buy if you're gonna do the gravity fed system off of a container. Another thing that you're gonna need for the gravity fed system off of a container is the valve that comes out of your container attached to the hose that goes into the bird room. So this is a small valve that they also sell for this system and it allows you to open a hole in your container. You connect it to your container you connect it to your hose, and then this feeds into the bird room. So this is also something else that you're gonna need. Now, if you decide to go the route that I did for my bird room, um, I didn't go the container route. The reason why I didn't go the container route was because I didn't wanna have to worry about cleaning a container. Unfortunately, depending on where you put this container, if you have, for example, my outdoor bird room, uh, the best place that I could have placed it was up on the roof. And up on the roof, this container was gonna be getting direct sunlight. So the water was gonna be heating up. It was probably gonna be very warm up there. That would have become a problem. Also, over time with that sunlight, that container is gonna gain some algae buildup or some goop, or it's gonna get, you know, you're gonna have to clean it out every so often. So I decided that the container wasn't the best option for me. 
And what I ended up doing was I ended up attaching the system directly to the city water that we have here. So I attached it directly to the hose. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that system looks like now. As you can see, I had to come out of my main hose from the house and I went out with a PVC fitting. And I went with this PVC fitting and I kind of looped it around the side of the house. It was half inch for those that are interested in knowing what PVC type this is. And um, I kind of looped it around before going into the bird room. I added two filters. The reason for adding these two filters were just as precautions. The city water that we have here is very clean. It's very good. But every once in a while, if they're doing work or whatever the case may be, you don't know if you're going to get any sediment inside of this water. There's also calcium buildup that could form because of this water. So these two filters protect the entire system from these filters. It continues up and it goes into this pressure reducer and this is an edstrom pressure reducer and what this does is it converts that city water that's coming out at probably over 50 psi's of pressure and it drops it down all the way to about three psi's of pressure and you're going to need this you cannot connect these lines directly to the city water with anything that is over 10 psi's because that is just going to be too much pressure for this entire system and what's going to happen is it could blow out the 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 valves the valves could leak you could start to have problems with your t's leaking and so on so you need to buy a pressure reducer in order to get that pressure down enough to where these valves can work properly and that's pretty much it guys once you set up this pressure reducer as you can see it comes in half inch from the directly from the hose passes the filters comes up to the pressure reducer and from the pressure reducer it goes in straight to the normal hose again that feeds into the inside of the aviary now once i did this once i get it to the inside i decided to add a small shut off valve right before it starts to feed all of the birds and i did this for a very specific reason if i ever have to go ahead and fix something outside i can go ahead and shut the valve on the inside portion of the bird room and then that makes sure that the whole entire line system is filled with water rather than having to shut everything off outside and then we have air coming into the system and it becomes a whole nother problem which later on in the video we'll talk about that because when you finally set this all up when you finally turn on the water one of the hardest things to do is get the air out of the system you have to clear the air out of all of these hoses in order for these valves to work properly if there's any air in the system the valves won't work correctly and you may have a valve that you're touching and touching and there's no water coming out and if there's no water coming out the bird that's in that cage is most probably going to die because he's not getting anything to drink so let's talk about how to drain the system once you have everything completely set up you have all of your valves installed everything is completely connected how do you drain the system or how do you get all the air out of your system to make it work properly this is why it's so important to add the little ends right here the drains the what's going to end up letting go of all the air that's in your system you can't turn on your water and let the water flow through the system if you don't have a drain so you need to open your drain completely on every single one of these ends that you see. Once you open up these drains, it allows you to open your hose at the main area. Once you open your hose, the water starts to flow through the entire system, pushing out all the air that's inside of this hose. Once it pushes out all the air, and you come over here and you start to see that water's coming out of the ends out of the drains you're able to go ahead and shut them off and you know that for that section individually all the air has been put out if you don't add these drains if you don't add these end caps right here you're not able to drain the system properly of all the air that it has inside of it so make sure that you always have these things because not only do they allow you to drain water that you have in the system to keep the water clean inside of your system but in the initial stages of getting water to all of your lines you're going to have to go ahead and open these to make sure that as the water comes in from the front it pushes out all that air out of all these lines and that air is going to come out of that section once it starts to release water you go ahead and you shut it back up again and then that's how you get water to every single one of your valves without having any air in your system at all. 
that's pretty much everything that you're going to need for this system to work. Now, all you have to do is decide, do you want to go with the system that gets it directly from the hose, or do you want to go the route where you get a gravity fed tank, put it on top of your bird room and then let it work that way. It's all up to you, whatever works best for you. I decided that for me, the best method was obviously directly from the hose. I never have to touch it again. I don't have to worry about cleaning a tank. I don't have to worry about anything besides looking at that pressure regulator that that thing has out there, making sure that it always has pressure and that we're getting water through the system. Now, it took some time for the birds to get used to it. It took some time for them to adapt themselves to this new system. It wasn't something that was very easy. As you can see back here, there's a lot of cages. So when I decided to make the switch, I didn't switch everyone at once. It was going to be too difficult to monitor everyone and you could lose a lot of birds if you're not very careful. So what I ended up doing was that I did connect all the cages with the water system. I'd made all my connections. I set up the whole entire aviary with the water system, but I left the little hose with the T's and the, uh, the valves just dangling off the front of the cage. I didn't connect it to the cage. And then little by little, I went by sections. I started off with this wall on this side and I would do eight cages, eight to 12 cages at a time. And I would test it out. I would take out their uh, water cup I would install this, um, this small little valve in the same area where they had their water cup and I would monitor the birds. Now, every single day I would go up to those cages and with a small little prong, a little metal prong, I would touch the little tip, that little tip that you see on the center right there. I would touch it to the left and to the right. And what that would do is it would leak. It would cause water to fall from that valve and the birds inside of the cage would see that. Little by little, they started to become more interested in this water that was coming out of there. And once they lost that initial fear of this strange new thing hanging off of the side of their cage, they would go up to it and they would drink water. Now, some of the birds were very quick. I noticed that the Gouldians caught on extremely quick. The starfinches caught on extremely quick. But there were other, some of the smaller birds, for example, the owl finches, those had a very hard time getting used to this water system. Some of the mass grass finches also had a hard time. And then the Africans, we're not even going to talk about those because some of them, they never wanted to learn. So you have to be extremely patient while doing this. And usually the first day, even if the bird doesn't drink water, you're not going to notice much of a change. They're going to be tight feathered. They're going to be happy. They're going to be good. One day without water is not going to hurt your bird. On day two, you start to notice them a little bit weirder. You start to notice the birds that are not really drinking too much water. But on day three, that's when you really can tell who has not wanted to drink water from this. And that's when you have to act. By day three, some of the birds didn't want to drink water. And what I had to do was I would grab the bottom portion of the, uh, the tubes that I use to give them water in the past. I would fill it up with water and I would put it directly below the valve where they have to go and drink water. Right away, they would come to this because they're used to this and they would drink water from there, rehydrate themselves, see the valve. I would touch the valve again with the little metal prong to make sure that it would leak and they would notice this. And little by little, these birds started to get used to the fact that water was coming out of this small little, um, out of this small little valve. So it did take time. I would give them about those sections of eight to 12 cages. I would give them about five days. After five days, when I noticed that everyone was drinking, I would say, okay, these guys are good. Let's move over to the next section of eight to 12 cages. And little by little, I did this and it took probably, God, it probably took about two months, two months or a little bit more to get everyone back here situated, drinking from, uh, from these different types of, uh, little valves. I keep forgetting the word valve, 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 valve. So it took some time to get them used to drinking to these valves, but I have to be honest with you. If you're going to make this change, if you're going to buy these valves, I highly recommend it. It saves me so much time. I don't have to worry about water anymore. One of the biggest problems that I had in here with these water containers was switching them out every two days or, or so on. And not just switching them out because you can't just grab that container, toss the water out and put fresh water in. These containers over time, they build a calcium deposit around the rings. They build a, a 
gook, like a gunk, this, uh, this, it almost looks like a white booger that gets created around the edge. So you have to clean these containers. You have to take them all outside. You have to put them in a container or a bucket with water and Clorox to make sure that you sanitize them. Then you fill them back up and put them to your birds. And this takes hours every single weekend cleaning all of these containers. Not just that, but it takes hours to refill containers for everyone that's back here. So ever since I set up this system, ever since everyone now is drinking from the automatic water, I have so much free time. And that free time, I'm able to put it forward to one, making more videos for you guys, two, taking better care of the birds, doing more nest inspections, better record keeping. It, there's so much more that I'm able to do now that I wasn't able to do before. One of the things that's also great is I come into the bird room less often. And I know you're probably asking, why is it better to come into the bird room less often? Well, right now we're in the middle of the breeding season. The less time that you spend in here, the more time that you give them alone to themselves without the pressure of you being in their environment, the better that they are going to succeed at hatching those eggs, at sitting tighter, at feeding their chicks, and so on. Because regardless of whether they know me and they're used to me being in here, they don't like it. Some of them flutter around back and forth. They get scared while you're walking in between the cages or in between these little hallways. So the more time that they have to themselves, the more peace and quiet that they get, the better that they're going to perform. So this water system has been great so far. It has been amazing. Um, the only regret that I have is that I wish I would have done it sooner. I wish I would have installed this system as soon as I did this bird room because it would have saved me such a headache over the past year giving everybody water and making sure that everything is clean in here. So as you can see, this system has been working great. Now, as far as problems that you may encounter, let's go over those before we end the video, because there are a couple problems that you could encounter while you set up your system. The number one problem that I had was birds not wanting to obviously drink from this, um, from this valve system. You have to be very patient. You have to keep an eye on them. Like I said, usually the first three days are gonna be the most dangerous, crucial days. Keep an eye on that bird. Make sure that they're drinking water. These valves, they you can regulate them. If you twist this portion to the left, it loosens up the ability of water to come out. So it is easier for the water to come out when they hit that little thing right here. So when I would put this valve system into the cage for the first three days, I would give it a quarter turn to the left. And what this would do is obviously it would make it easier for them because once they would touch that little tiny plunger that it has in the center right here, the water would just squirt out. It was easier for them. The only problem with this is that the bottom of your cage is gonna be full of water by the following day because these birds, sometimes they like to play with it. They don't know how to control it yet. They're learning how to touch this thing and some birds will sit there and hit that little, that little plunger and just hold it and water's just squirting out and squirting out and squirting out and it's going into the bottom of your cage. For some of the ones back here where I have the paper roll system, it just completely drenched the paper roll system and that water would fall into the bottom cage and it would fall from that one onto the following cage and so on. So the beginning was horrible. It smelled like wet birds in this bird room for a while until they got used to it. But once you pass that week mark, once it's been over a week and you notice that that bird has learned, you can grab your valve again, you give it a quarter turn back to the right and you put it, you shut it to the, the, the tightest setting that it has. And now it's a little bit harder for them to get water out. Now they're going to hit that little thing right there. And as they touch that little thing, less water will come out, but it's going to be enough for them to continue drinking. And now you're not going to have that mess that you normally had while you were teaching them to drink that water. So that's one of the reasons why I like this one so much, because it is a very flow. You can control the flow of the water that comes out of these valves by turning it to the left. More water comes out, obviously, by tightening it to the right, less water comes out. If you notice that your bird at any point has droopy eyes, they start to get sad eyes, they start to get droopy, their wings are a bit droopy, go ahead and give them some water. Put a D cup with water, put their normal water container back inside of that cage, let them hydrate themselves up because if you don't do this, they will end up dying. It takes some of them time. So be patient with them and you should be fine. Other than that, other problems that I had was that these teas that I ended up getting, um, they were difficult 
to get inside of this hose. Some of them, man, you they they kind of go into about there, fine, but then to push it all the way to the end, it's nearly impossible. I ended up, I think it was after about a week of pushing these things in, I could barely feel my fingers. It hurt so much to get these things installed. So what I ended up having to do was, since I wasn't going to go out and buy more tees because these already came with the system, I grabbed the lighter. I would heat up the hose just a tiny bit, not a lot. If you, if you overdo it, you're going to mess up the hose. Just a tiny bit, you heat up the hose to where that rubber gets soft, and then this thing would just boop, slide right in without any issues whatsoever. After the whole system was installed, there were a couple of tees like this along the, the walls of the system that um, were leaking a bit of water. They had like a tiny little drizzle of water, and I didn't know exactly what it was. I went out to my pressure regulator. I saw that it was shooting a little bit over five pounds of pressure. I reduced it to about three pounds of pressure. And then those leaks stopped. And over time, I've had no more issues. The only other issue that I have had over time with these valves is that unfortunately, some of these birds like to eat the seeds and they like to wet their seeds. So they'll grab a seed, they'll come up to the valve and inside of that little hole, they'll stick a seed because they want to wet that seed to soften it up. And what happens is sometimes the seed will get stuck in there. It presses that little plunger to the side and I come in here in the morning and there's water just bloop, 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 just leaking from these things. And we have a small little puddle on the floor. And I'm talking about small. It's nothing big, um, but it is a headache. It is something that you have to watch out for. You have to inspect these every single day. I go through the cages and I kind of just take a look at them. Not every single one of them, but I just take a look to make sure that none of them are leaking or causing any sorts of puddles or that any are stuck. But that is very minimal compared to what I would have to do before filling up water containers. So I'm willing to do it. It doesn't bother me one bit. I really hope that this video was helpful for you guys. I hope that you have learned a little bit more about how this automatic water system works. Remember, it is called the Edstrom Veriflow water system. You can buy it in a variety of different locations. The manufacturer is Edstrom. Now, obviously, there are a whole bunch of different suppliers or websites that offer this for a variety of different prices depending on your area. So just Google it. Try to find out who has it in your uh, area and go for it. So far, it has worked wonderful for me, and I have nothing but good things to say about it. So I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Like always, if you did, remember to hit a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and we will see each other in the next one.